Okay, so what we are trying to do, and we're going to give you a demo now, um, is how you can actually have your cake and eat it too. Let your developers have fun building their applications using popular Mongo APIs and client libraries and all that, but then have the database actually run um, inside Oracle. And so with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Josh Spiegel, and he's going to show you how this works. Come on out, Josh. Thanks, yeah, so I'm gonna show how you can migrate a MongoDB application to run directly against Oracle Database. So I'm gonna take an export file from MongoDB and I'm gonna load it into an always free version of the autonomous database. And then I'm gonna show how that loaded data can be accessed by SQL and MongoDB applications at the same time. So the basic idea is if you're a Mongo developer, you can develop your application against Oracle exactly the same way that you would develop it against MongoDB. So we can find the Mongo Connect string for this database on the Database Actions tab. So this connection string allows you to connect any MongoDB tool or language driver uh, directly to Oracle Database. So to put it another way, it makes Oracle Database look like MongoDB to applications and developers. So I'm going to use it to load some data. So I'm showing you now the contents of a line-delimited JSON file that's on my laptop. So each line in this file is a JSON object, and it represents one of the database sessions that we have at Cloud World this week. So this is exactly the same format that you would get if you exported data out of MongoDB. So I could use an Oracle tool to load this into the database, but if I'm a Mongo developer, I'd probably prefer to use something that I'm already familiar with. So I'm gonna use Mongo's import tool to load this. So I'm calling Mongo import, and I'm passing that connection string and the file name. And that just loaded those 200 sessions into the database. So let's go back to database actions and verify that that data was loaded. So I'm opening up the SQL page, and we can see that it has a table called sessions. And if I select the column named data from that table, we can see that it returned the 200 objects as rows in this table. So I'll come back to this in a minute, and I'll show you how SQL can actually access the values inside of these objects. But first I wanna show how this data can still be accessed as a collection uh, by a Mongo developer. So I'm gonna use the connection string again, but this time I'm gonna connect using Mongo's shell. So this shell is an interactive line mode program. It's kind of like Oracle's SQL Plus or SQL CL. So now that I'm connected, I'm going to access these sessions again. So I'm calling um, find on the sessions collection. So calling find like this without an argument, it's like running a SQL query without a where clause. And so it starts to return all 200 of the sessions. And you can see these objects have the attributes you might expect, like the title and speaker and so on. So I'm gonna call find again, but this time I'm gonna use a filter expression. So the argument to find acts like a where clause. It filters the values I get back. So in this case, it's only returning objects that uh, have the track equal to JSON application development. And so it returned the four sessions we have on JSON-related topics this week. And this first one is actually a hands-on lab about what I'm presenting right now. Uh, so that lab is actually Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, it should be a good lab, so please join us uh, for that. But it lists Roger Ford as the speaker, and unfortunately, he couldn't make it this week. So I need to update this document. So I'm gonna update it to say that I'm the speaker and said, I'm gonna call the update method. So it found that document by its unique ID, and it set the speaker to me, and it, it also added a note mentioning that I'm substituting for Roger. And so if I run and I read that document again, you can see now I'm the speaker. So using this API, 
Mongo developers can continue to use the same tools and language drivers that they're familiar with, uh, but at the same time, they gain the ability to use SQL directly over their JSON. So let's go back to the SQL page. And this next query is going to project out some of these JSON attributes as relational columns. So it's projecting out the title, the speaker, the notes. So dotting into the JSON column like this lets us treat these JSON attributes as if they were relational columns. And then we can do things like use it in a group by clause or a join condition or an order by expression. We can create relational views over these attributes or even integrate it with data sources that might not even be JSON. So my last query here is going to do a group by. It's going to group these sessions together based on their type. So it did a group by on the type attribute, and it shows us how many of these sessions uh, we have of each type. So I've, I've barely scratched the surface of what's possible here, uh, but we now provide this popular Mongo API and combine it with the power of SQL. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Okay. Thanks.